dear students now i am going to cover the next part of phylum protozoa so i have already told you about the protozoa term its unicarectus and zooarctus so generally protozoan are the microscopic acellular organisms and there are about 50000 known species of phylum protozoa so all different animals such as amoeba paramecium and euglena they can be placed in different subphylum and classes under the phylum protozoa so classification of protozoa phylum protozoa is divided into four subphyla first sarcomastigophora second sporozoa third nidospora and fourth is the ciliophora so you can see here the chart is given of the classification and uh, there is the division of phylum into different subphylum then superclass and then classes so generally it has four subphylum sarcomastigophora sporozoa nidospora and ciliophora then these subphylum divided into different superclasses and then different classes let us study about these classes one by one so subphylum sarcomastigophora is divided into three superclass first is mastigophora second is opelinata and third is sarcodina mastigophora is divided into two different classes phytomastigophora and zoomastigophora opelinata is the superclass and sarcodina is having two classes rhizopodia and actinopodia so in these the common characters are like locomotory organelles they may be pseudopodia or flagella and nucleus is single and there is no spore formation and syngamy occurs in reproduction which is a sexual method of reproduction then comes to the next mastigophora so they are also known as the flagellates so locomotory organelles are flagella in adult and binary fission is longitudinal and they may be free living or parasitic and nutrition is autotrophic or heterotrophic or both then this mastigophora is divisible into two classes first is phytomastigophora second is zoomastigophora so class 1 phytomastigophora it having the chlorophyll bearing chromatophore force so nutrition mainly holophytic or by phototrophy and reserve food is starch or paramyelone so they have usually only one or two flagella and nucleus is vesicular second is zoomastigophora here chlorophyll or chromatophores are absent and these are mostly parasitic and reserve food is glycogen and flagella may be many then superclass sarcodina locomotory organelles are pseudopodia so example of pseudopodia is the amoeba so it's having the three classes rhizopodia actinopodia and pyroplasmia so in rhizopodia you will study the amoeba and ant amoeba then superclass opelinata they are have numerous cilia like organelles over the entire body cover and there is no cytostome and two or more nuclei are present so they are all parasitic an example is the opelina next is subphylum sporozoa so here locomotory organelles are absent cilia or flagella may be present in gametes so spores usually present and these are endoparasites so it's having the different classes class telosporia class toxoplasmia and class haplosporia subphylum nidospora spores have several cells having one or more polar filaments which are coiled thread and all are parasitic zygote give rise to one or more trophozoite without sporogony then it has a class mixosporidae and microsporidae so in mixosporidia spores are of multicellular origin and large and in microsporidia spores are of unicellular origin and small 
then comes to the next subphylum ciliophora and it's having the one class ciliata and example is the paramecium so you can see that they possess the cilia or compound ciliary structure for locomotion and feeding and there is presence of an infraciliary system mouth or cytostome is present and cytopies is also present which is permanent and the two types of nuclei, vegetative or macronucleus and micro or reproductive nucleus is present. And here fission is transverse and sexual reproduction takes place and one or more contractile vacuoles may be present. So example is the paramecium. So these are the different types of protozoan which are placed under different superclasses or subphylum or having different classes. So now the economical importance. So protozoa are classified into two types, harmful protozoa and beneficial protozoa. So beneficial protozoa means they help in one or other way. So they form the food or they provide the food for insect larva and worms which are taken up by fishes and crabs and are eaten by men. Then insect control, several protozoa control the harmful insect by persisting their bodies. Then helpful in sanitation, a large number of protozoa living in polluted water feed upon organic matter and thus purify it. So, then harmful protozoa, pollution of water, they pollute the water, destruction of wooden articles and reduction in fertility of soil etc. So these are some protozoans. So I have covered the classification of protozoa and their economical importance. So thanks.